You may feel a little scared right now, and rightfully so. You've just ingested a lot of organic chemistry, at least like three lectures worth. Don't worry. If you're still a little shaky figuring out structures, especially that last one, that was probably, may have been a little much, but like I said, I get the feeling you guys are sharp. This will all make sense soon. We still have to learn functional groups. It's gonna make drawing these a lot easier. So, in the meantime, I'm gonna give you a little bit of homework so you get comfortable with drawing structures. See if you can look up some of these on Wikipedia. The structure should be the first thing you see if you're on the Wikipedia page. Draw the structure as you go. See if you can check if each atom has feels eight electrons. Remember, the only reason why they formed a molecule in the first place is so they can all feel like they have eight electrons. And I tried to include some fun compounds here just to make it interesting. There's a lot of drugs and stuff. And if you get confused, just draw what you see. We'll come back to it later. It's kind of just best to plunge in and, if anything, get used to drawing chemicals. Even if you don't know what you're doing. Also, I should warn you, when you're looking some of these up, the extra electrons, like oxygen, like in oxygen, they may not be drawn all the time. Sometimes they just assume that you know that you're there. Look at this oxygen. And this one here. We know that from the configurations we went over that they each have some electrons that don't bond and they hang out. Even if they're not drawn, it's just assumed that they're still there. Organic chemists sometimes don't draw electrons unless they're using them because, well, you know, that's just the way they are. But you'll be fine as long as you look up at the configurations I drew for you. Secondly, you may see some of this action going on here. Some bonds may look really, really dark, and some look like dotted lines. These are just regular old single bonds, but their position in three-dimensional space is specified. This is something called stereochemistry. We'll cover all that in a lecture in the future. But for now, as you're drawing, you can either make them single bonds or just get used to drawing the dashes and wedges now. So, let's review. First, we talked about what an atom is and why they form molecules. It's simply because each atom wants to feel like it has a full valence shell. Two for hydrogen and eight for everything else. Then we met the game. Make sure you review those configurations I drew for you. It will make things a lot easier in the future, especially when you're drawing structures. It won't seem as random if you know a couple of configurations, especially for carbon. Know those four. And lastly, we showed how these bonding configurations for the five big atoms of organic chemistry apply to some simple molecules. And hopefully in your homework, you'll see how they apply to even some bigger ones, some drugs and stuff. And, um, well, that's about it. Thanks for uh, tuning in, watching the first installment of Organic Chem is Easy. Remember, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, email me at organicchemiseasy at gmail.com. I'm especially interested in feedback since I've never really done a video series or a tutorial like this. Um, so, thanks for watching. Um, this has been fun. Keep it real. Thank you, guys.